Welcome in, everybody, to another edition of the Coach Shinnick Show. This is head coach Pete Shinnick from the UWF football program. I'm Will Kennedy, and we are back with you once again here in the Daryl Gooden Center on campus in Pensacola, Florida, celebrating another victory. 36-24 was the final over West Alabama. Coach, this was a weird week coming in. It was a salute to service game. It was your senior day, and we had some weather pushing through the area. It ended up getting there a little bit later, yeah. but we pushed kickoff up a little bit, which kind of changed the dynamic of the day a little bit. So a little bit different than probably what the plan was, and it's always tough to play West Al. Oh, it really is. And I mean, we have we have really had tremendous games with West Al going back to, I mean, they, they, they blew us out a couple times, but I mean, since that, it's kind of settled in. I got a tremendous amount of respect for them. Uh, but really, what, what a great atmosphere, getting it moved up. We got the word out. Uh, fans still came out. We were able to honor uh, close to 30 seniors uh, there, and that was, you know, fun to have their families there and be able to do that. And then, uh, you know, salute to service uh, game. I thought it was all huge leading up to it. And then it was the game that, you know, probably we expected to see number one defense uh, in the mm, conference, big bodies. giving up 18 points a game, had really shut people down, held Delta State uh, to 20 points, West Georgia to 22. We knew that, okay, this was a different type of defense than we faced. Uh, their athleticism and length is something that, you know, I don't know that anybody really replicates because uh, long DBs, long linebackers, the, one of the bigger, more physical defensive linemen. So really proud of our guys to really take advantage of what we did and to be able to get the points that we were able to get on the board. Let's dive into the highlights from the first half. You guys lose the coin toss, get the football, and go on a nice drive to start the game. I know you want to come out of the locker room, want to set the tone, set the tempo. Uh, kind of one of those drives where you're mixing it up a little bit, a lot of runs, mm -hmm. and it ends up with Pee Wee Jarrett taking it into the end zone. But I thought C.J. Wilson on that first drive – and Ravion Hargrove mm -hmm. kind of established, hey, we're here to run the football. No, it really did. And I thought both those guys ran extremely well throughout the course of the game. But that opening drive, I think well, that was crucial for us. Uh, you know, we're always going to, if we win the toss, we're going to defer. Uh, because, you know, we want to get the ball to start the second it's half. Math. Don't, it don't is. Try yeah. to do the equation. Yeah, exactly. So everybody's like, well, don't you get it anyway? Anyway, anyway, with that, they won the toss and they put us out there. And our offense did exactly what uh, we wanted them to do. Defense looked good right off the start. Kind of one of those weird first quarters where it was a slow football game, but you kind of knew it would pick up pace. But they get the ball later in the first quarter. They drive down and tie the game up. It's Demetrius Battle. He's a load. Number eight. <laughs> they call him eight ball. He's like 6'2", yeah. 240. My yeah. gosh. He, he can run it. Well, he is just a thick guy. We've seen him over the years. And, I mean, he runs as physical and, and really – uh, does as good a job inside and outside uh, for a guy his size. Uh, very impressed with him. Always have been. Uh, he's been a load for our guys. I thought our guys contained him well, but still, he, he's, he's a tough one to bring down. You guys drive down the field, and, and it looks like you're going to score again at one point, and then it's just one of those, the ball's underthrown a little mm. bit. It was a weird day, especially in the first half for, for Byron, for Pee Wee. He just didn't seem to have the touch and the connection. Underthrows Dave Durden, ends up in interception in the end zone. You, I'm sure you're thinking like I was thinking in the booth, like, here we go again. This feels like Delta State a little bit. Well, you know, anytime you turn the ball over, it's just we, we, we got to be able to regroup and get back, which I really, you know, really love what our guys were able to do after that. That's frustrating because I felt like we had a really good series of events take place to get us down there. Um, and we had a great run by Pee Wee prior to that. Um, yeah, would like a little more air on that ball, obviously, uh, but it is what it is. And then it's, you know, then it's really just us getting back to where we needed to get to. Uh, and so wasn't going the way we'd hoped in the passing game, just felt like we were a little off. Uh, but man, were we able to pick up things in the run game and Pee Wee was doing a fantastic job with his legs and then also reading it right and getting the ball in our backs hands when they needed to. There had been a fumble earlier by Shamari Mason when it looked like you guys were on the route to scoring as well too. They get a field goal from Gabe Dunkel, again, great name <laughs> for a kicker, makes it 10-7. So it's, it's a weird vibe. You feel like yep. you're playing better. You're, yeah. The stats are kind of saying, hey, we should be in front of this game. Then the special teams kind of took mm -hmm. over and I thought this was super dynamic. Dave Durden had a fantastic game. Four punt returns for 94 yards and just put you in repetitive, great yeah. field position. Unfortunately, 
It was a bunch of field goals rather than touchdowns, right. but Griffin Sarah was sharp. He goes before half and knocks two field goals through from you know, that mid-30 mm -hmm. yard range to give you a lead at the half. Yeah, Dave Dave really gave us a great spark. And I mean, that first return, um, I think we calculated on those four returns, I think he had 12 or 13 people you know, oh, missed tackles. There was one on. where nine guys yeah. had their hands on him. And yeah, yeah so phenomenal. And then again, that's what, you know, I, I think you you look at some of, we, we had a couple opportunities there. Uh, their defense is extremely well. It's the number one red zone defense around. They're, I mean, they're doing a great job. Uh, and we just missed on a couple of things. We weren't able to connect uh, on stuff that, you know, we're, we're typically used to connecting on. So that was a bit frustrating, but Griff just has been money and, and he has been dialed in. And so, um, you know, when you sit there and as you're calling that, you go, okay, I know no matter what, uh, you know, we're going to be able to get three points out of this. So that gives you a little more, you're, you're a little more dynamic in your play calling. You're a little more aggressive in what you're trying to do because it's like, I know I'm getting three out of it and we'll take the point somehow, some way. Allow myself to correct myself. That was three field goals from Griffin. So you're down 10-7, you're up yeah. 16 uh, to 10 there at the break by the time all was said mm -hmm. and done. So he's yeah. on his route to a, a franchise, a program record sure. with five field goals in the game. You go into the locker room 16-10 at the break, and again, feeling like that probably should be a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what, what was kind of the vibe going out before the second half? Well, yeah, it was exactly that. And I, I, we've been very honest with our guys that it's like, guys, look, you know, um, is that our best? Or, you know, what, we, we turned the ball over in the red zone. We gave up a big play uh, that I feel like we can cover and that we can do a better job on. Uh, so anytime you have plays that don't necessarily fit your M.O., you know, credit West Al. Uh, I thought they came up with really a great game plan on defense and a great plan on offense to attack us. Uh, I think that shows you a little bit of, you know, how people respect us and what they're trying to do. They're creating different opportunities to, uh, you know, come up with ways to scheme us and do things. Uh, so tremendous amount of respect, I think, uh, you know, on our part for how they approached us. Uh, but we knew that that wasn't necessarily as good as we can play. Uh, and so that was what halftime was. Let's regroup. Let's get this, you know, they're going to get the ball. Uh, let's, let's, when we get the ball, let's take advantage of it and let's put ourselves in a position where we can go out and get a lead and then keep a lead. Things would pick up a little bit in half number two. We'll take a break here and we'll come back and get through the rest of the game on the Coach Shinnick Show. Real change occurs in that split second, a moment of connection among people with a common purpose, a shared vision, and a unified goal. What will you change? What will change you? The University of West Florida, no limits. Can health insurance help cure loneliness? Can it take care of your best friend too? or hold your hand for nine months? Can it be there for you at 3 a.m.? Or inspire you to go the extra mile? We think so. Which is why every day we ask ourselves, what else can health insurance do? Come find out. What does Argo Spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pre-game grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. Welcome back into the Coach Shinnick Show. Will Kennedy and head coach Pete Shinnick with you. 16-10 was our score at the half with West Al. Gray skies. The wind was whipping around. It was a little bit of a factor. You yep. mentioned Griffin Sarah was just cutting right through it, though, no problems. Maybe impacting the passing game. At least that's what I would say if I was the quarterback. <laughs> and I was, unfortunately, two for 14 at the right. half. Uh, Pee Wee would pick it up. You mentioned his legs and kind of what he was doing. Let's dive into the second half highlights because he continued to pick up, you know, first downs for you, mm -hmm. make good decisions, some designed runs, and then sometimes just feeling yeah. the pressure in the pocket and getting around. You guys – Stop them, get the football back, you go on a nice drive. And, and you mentioned CJ earlier, Ravion Hargrove gets loose on one that puts you guys, you know, further ahead. It makes it kind of that 
two score game, yeah. 28 yarder touchdown. No, that, that was huge. Third down play. Um, and we really had hoped that they would line up the way they did when we came out in that formation. Uh, 3K hit it perfectly. Uh, O-line tight ends blocked it extremely well. And, you know, he's, he's out in the free. And we feel like if we get him even or level with anybody, uh, he's going to find a way into the end zone. So that was great. And that was really kind of, you know, what we felt like talking at halftime. If we can get this lead, guys, that next step is, you know, now where, where, where do we go from there? And that's really kind of what we were fighting the entire second half is when can we get that other opportunity uh, to put us where we need to be? And, you know, West Al did a great job. They, you know, they're, they're a very competitive team. Probably one of the better, better teams in the country with only four wins. Um, so. super, yeah, super <laughs> impressed. We get their record coming in the way they played. You had gone eight plays, 80 yards on that uh, 3K touchdown. But they answer, and that's a sign of a good football team. It they is. come right back down the field. They go nine plays, 71 yards. Webb takes it in for the touchdown. So 23-17, back to right. that six-point game. But answer, and I said this in the broadcast, they answer, you answer. You come right back and go down the field. And I thought, we've seen a ton of good catches from this young man. We talked about his <laughs> punt returns already. The one that David Durden has, 48-yarder from Pee Wee Jarrett, that might be the best one he's had, including the one-handed Superman catch against Valdosta last year. Yeah, that's that's phenomenal because, first off, that ball was in the air about 60 yards once Pee Wee dropped back and went through. But then to catch it, you know, everybody was saying, oh, he's out of bounds, he's out of bounds. God bless the refs because they got it right. But, I mean, that shot that we have from Morgan, I mean, just shows you that his foot is in and his other one's pretty close. That's an amazing focus and concentration to be able to bring that ball in. And Pee Wee threw it really, I mean, as far and as deep into the end zone as you possibly could. Unbelievable catch. I agree. It'll go down as one of the best ever. The old school worth that is he chucked it. Right down the field. <laughs> and you mentioned Morgan Gibbons' picture, which you can see on GoArgos.com, but also our camera crew on the broadcast. We had a replay of it. I said, you can see right there on the replay that his Perfect. toes are in. Fortunately, we didn't have to go to the replay, yeah. <laughs> which you can't do anyways in these games. So that makes it 30-17. to 17. You're going to the fourth quarter, and I mean, normally, hey, 30-17, to 17, we're feeling pretty good. But you know it's not over with West no. Al. They would come back down the field. they get a 57-yard pass from – uh, halfback pass from yeah, battle really. to Demetrius Nall, and it's a, it's a trick play, and it worked. And now, we saw it on Sunday in the NFL with we Christian did, McCaffrey. Yeah, I mean, and and we'll we'll probably see it next week too because Valdosta <laughs> has the it. same thing. Uh, they've run it twice. They ran it against Delta, and they ran it last week. Uh, yeah, really frustrating on that because we're in man coverage, and we really should have just stayed on our man. Uh, if we do, I mean, we might tackle him. Uh, from behind as we had great pursuit and everybody who should have been there would be there. That's a frustrating one. And really what that play did, and I think it's a great lesson for our players, that that play gave West Alabama life. We shut that play down. It's not there. Now you got a you got a third down situation. And you know, now we're changing the tide a little bit because we had that lead that we wanted and we were in the position that we needed to. It just made it a little longer, you know, process to get to where we wanted to get to. I'll give Battle credit though. That's a tougher throw than oh people my gosh. think from a running back, and he hit him in stride. Then your defense, I thought, really took over the football game. They get a bunch of stops. You get two more field goals mm-hmm. from Griffin Sarah. Steve Dawson did a great job in the game punting. I mean, I, he could have had both kicks inside the 21, ended up one bounce and then bounced back out. Right. He, I think he averaged, you know, 48, 49 yards yeah. a punt. We mentioned Griff Sarah, Caden Williams on the kickoffs, I thought was fantastic, setting up bad yes. field position for West Al. Nice high kicks and good coverage. No, our, our special teams were fantastic. We've mentioned Dave. You mentioned uh, Steve Dawson. I mean, Steve Dawson, one of the best punter, punters in the country. He doesn't get the recognition that he needs. Uh, we've only punted 18 times. So, I mean. He's yeah, two a game. I mean, that's, that's it, it, exactly. Money. Not a bad deal. But he changed the field position. And, I mean, what he does, uh, the majority of his punts were somewhere close to midfield. Uh, he doesn't get credit for it. And then the other guy, you know, Daquan uh, Bailey yes, Brown. I was say, two kick was, returns, yeah, 71 his, yards. His kick returns were unbelievable. His kick coverage uh, was fantastic. And so, I mean, our special teams, I mean, we, you know, we have we have said win the win the special teams battle, win the special teams, win field position, do that. They came up huge, and really that was the push that we needed. We were getting great field position, we were making them drive the distance. Uh, really, it, it they they were they were awesome. Some days when your offense isn't at their best, you need your defense. You need special teams, and that happened on Saturday. Oh. You guys improved to seven and one, five and one in conference play. Things are rolling along. We got two Going. more regular season games left. We'll come down to break down the next one. Coach will be back with us on the show. We'll talk about Valdosta State and another trip up uh, to Georgia to play the Blazers. 
I have fond memories of the last time we were there. We'll get back into it with Coach <laughs> a little bit. Coming up next on the program, we'll talk more about the other fall sports, including a feature on the Men's Soccer Offensive Player of the Year. That's next on the Coach Shinnick Show. What do you expect from that first job out of college? Working your way up from the bottom? Instead, how does this sound? Starting in a guaranteed leadership position with people who look to you for guidance because you're trained to give it and make important decisions in critical situations. Skip entry level. Decide to lead as an Army officer. Welcome back into the Coach Shinnick Show. We have got a ton of exciting stuff happening with Argo Athletics across this campus with fall sports. And by the way, basketball right around the corner. We'll be breaking down those two teams for you in the weeks to come. Men's and women's soccer both ranked nationally, both rolling along. They both won the GSC regular season title and they're playing in the tournament. We'll talk about that in the next segment. But the conference awards have come out. Lots of accolades on both sides, including Offensive Player of the Year on the men's side for our own Kainan de Santos. Some of my students got a chance to sit down and talk to the Brazilian star. Oi, meu nome é Kainan, eu sou atacante aqui na Universal Forest Florida e eu sou do Brasil. What's the big difference between Brazilian and American soccer? Mm, I would say that like Brazilians are crazy for soccer. So like we grew up like playing soccer industry I think that like here, I don't see that much for soccer. Of course, I see for basketball or other sport, but for, for soccer especially, I don't see much. So I think that is the difference. Why do you think there are so many Brazilian soccer players in the US and at UWF? I think it's because in Brazil, soccer, if you want to be a professional, is so competitive. So I think that you see an opportunity here to play soccer and also uh, study and have a degree. I noticed your number had changed between the seasons. Why was your number changed? That's a good question because I like the number 10 because uh, my favorite player like Pelé, Ronaldinho, big players from Brazil, they used to wear the number 10. So for me it's an uh, inspiration. What kind of impact, if any, has your right arm had on your soccer playing? I mean, for me, it's something that I love uh, to have, actually, like because like making me be different of the others, and at the same time give mo motivation to to go and do because like I don't see uh, anything that can stop me because of this. Are you excited for the World Cup? No, oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> I'm gonna be in Brazil, so I'm so excited to watch with my family and friends. Congratulations again to Canaan and Bill Elliott is the Men's Coach of the Year. Joe Bartlinski, the Women's Coach of the Year. We'll do the rest of the All GSC Honors for you in the next segment and talk about volleyball, golf, and a bunch of other great stuff that's going on across our campus. That's next for the Coach Shinnick Show. Need to try it first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a Whataburger table tent. An orange and white trophy for your made to order burger. It means we cook your meal up fresh. And don't get up, because we'll bring it right to you. So if you're looking to sit down and celebrate the fact that you left it all on the field, we've got your number. Whataburger just like you like it. Groundbreaking orthopedic care is more than top rated quality scores, more than leading edge treatment options, more than world-class care close to home. It's all that 
and more. Andrews Institute, groundbreaking care. Welcome back to the Coach Shenick Show. It was another outstanding week for Argo Athletics. Volleyball hit the home court for two more GSC wins, sweeping both opponents. The Argos took out Mississippi College on Friday with Taylor Van Eckeren recording her 13th double-double with 32 assists and 10 digs. It was another straight set win over West Alabama on Senior Day Saturday. Camilla Vasquez led the way with 12 kills for the Argos. UWF is now 24-5 on the season and 14-1 in GSC play. They wrap up the regular season hosting Auburn Montgomery at 5 o'clock this Friday in the Fieldhouse. Then they will host the GSC tournament the next weekend. I, it was an extremely important week for us, um, especially having come off of being on the road for what felt like three straight weeks. And then obviously um, be able to pick up two wins over the weekend and specifically against Mississippi College, who obviously gave us a lot of trouble. But yeah, it was a fun weekend with Parents' Day, Senior Day, and uh, yeah, just a, it's just a lot of really good volleyball. And I was just, I was pleased with our players that they kept thinking about the week one day at a time, um, really focused on each individual opponent that we had. And yeah, that we played really clean volleyball uh, throughout the week. Yeah, I, I like our chances. I think we're in good shape. I mean, obviously AUM is I mean, they're physical, and, and they definitely play with a lot of fire, a lot of passion. Um, but I feel like we're ready to close out the season, um, you know, the regular season uh, of the conference schedule, and then definitely looking forward to hosting the conference championships again this year next week. Women's soccer is up to seventh in the country in the latest coaches poll. The Argos won their GSE tournament opener in a tight 2-1 final against West Georgia with Kylie Whited and Blair Cowan providing the goals in the victory. The Argos are now 15-2-1 and will face Lee in the next round of the conference tournament in Huntsville, Alabama on Friday. We knew West Georgia was always going to be really difficult. They, we only beat them 2-1 last time. Uh, they defend really well. They're well coached. They're disciplined. Um, so it, it was always going to be a tight one. So we're just happy to, to be able to get the victory and move on. Well, we've got some good gritty leaders. Um, and, you know, Kylie... Uh, why didn't you know she got scored a really nice goal today but this group has a little bit of bite in them and uh, Blair Blair's clutch and uh, her and Kylie <laughs> the two old ladies uh, did, a, did a good job a very good job to leading the team and not getting down and, and then pushing for that that winning goal and the all-conference honors are out coach Joe Bartlinski is the GSC coach of the year Blair Cowan the offensive player of the year and goalie Micaiah Lipsy, the Defensive Player of the Year. A total of seven Argos made either the first or second team all GSC honors. Men's Soccer also won their GSC tournament opener, shutting out Spring Hill 2-0 with goals from Keegan Lynch and Finn Werner. The Argos improved 11-2-3 on the season. They will take on Auburn Montgomery Thursday in the semifinals in Huntsville. And the men are also well represented in the conference honors. Coach Bill Elliott is the Conference Coach of the Year, and Kynan Dos Santos is the Offensive Player of the Year, with four Argos making either the first or second All-GSE teams. Both cross-country teams will compete in the GSE Championships in Montevallo, Alabama this weekend, and that is a look at what's going on inside UWF Athletics. We're not done yet, though. We'll preview football's road trip rivalry tilt with Valdosta State next on the Coach Shinnick Show. What do you expect from that first job out of college? Working your way up from the bottom? Instead, how does this sound? Starting in a guaranteed leadership position with people who look to you for guidance because you're trained to give it and make important decisions in critical situations. Skip entry level. Decide to lead as an Army officer. What does Argo Spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pre-game grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us.
Welcome back into the Coach Shinnick Show. It's time for our final segment. We'll talk about the next matchup for Coach Pete Shinnick's Argos, and that is on the road at Valdosta State. We've done the two home games. Now it's time for the two road games, right. including uh, Mississippi College to wrap the season up. Let's talk about Valdosta. This is a team that when last we saw them in Pensacola, it was the end of last season. You guys put 60 on them. <laughs> they went on to play for the national championship right. and had a nice run, changing coaches, which is always tough for a program. Yeah. And they've struggled this season a yeah. little bit. They're going to come in. Four and five, their conference record, you know, they're out of it as far as trying to make the playoffs. And you look at their their numbers, it's just been a weird season. They had a three-game losing streak, snapped that last mm -hmm. week with a nice win over North Greenville, but they had to score 22 in the fourth quarter to, to, to you know pull away and win that game. They score points, they've given up a ton of points. Yeah. They've got Ivory Durham back at quarterback, they've got Seth, uh, Seth McGill mm -hmm. and Jamar Tompkins at running backs, yeah. names we know. What's been their struggle? I mean, they, obviously they're dangerous on offense, but... Yeah, I, I think early on they were really struggling to find a defensive identity and obviously gave up a lot of points. You know, the Delta score, I mean, they were giving up, uh, you know, about 30 a pop there. Last couple of weeks, though, I mean, I know West Georgia got after them pretty well. North Greenville, I think they're starting to find their defensive identity and starting to play probably their best defensive football. Um, you know, they've, they've, they've gotten better against the run and they focused a little more on some things. Still very athletic, still the type of Valdosta team that you would expect. And then offensively, I don't know that they've missed a beat. I think if you look at their numbers, they're close to 500 yards a game. They're close to 35, 40 points a game, something like that. Uh, and, I mean, they are just dynamic. And, you know, Ivory is, you know, still one of the more electric players uh, in America. Not, 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 not just our league, but across a lot of levels. And so, you know, we, we felt like we had to play great. Uh, on defense last week to be able to keep us in the game as we're going to play a great uh, defense in West Al. And our offense had to take advantage of what they gave us. I think it's a little bit of, you know, our offense has got to really hold on to the ball, secure it. We can't turn it over like we did last week. we got to make the most of every opportunity because this offense is so electric. And again, as I mentioned, I mean, their defense just gets better and better every week. They started slow, but they're probably playing their best ball right now. You mentioned Ivory. I think he's thrown for about 2,400 yards and 24 touchdowns, only six interceptions. He's doing what you mm -hmm. expect from a guy who was a Harlan Hill-type candidate. Uh, their, their struggle has been, you mentioned defense, and a couple weeks ago we were talking, I think, on the program about they gave up almost 600 yards rushing mm -hmm. to Mississippi College. Yep. They give up about 260 a game. That's probably a little skewed by those numbers. Uh, you guys run the ball well. Is that kind of what you look at? And we've talked about it week in and week out. It feels like... We're not Mississippi College yet, but we're, we're, we're trying <laughs> well, no, that direction. We're really, I think we're in a very unique place uh, because, again, we've always said take what the defense gives you. And um, people obviously know we got some really good wide receivers. I think they've done a great job of trying to cloud their coverages a little bit and take some things away. And, you know, you, you let our running backs loose. They're going to do some great things. RO line's playing extremely well. But, yeah, when you look at them, and I think probably one of the more impressive things that they did was hold North Greenville under 100 yards rushing. So that had been a while since that happened. Uh, so you throw that into their stats again. I think they're getting better at it. They're committing more people to the box. They're committing more people closer to the line of scrimmage. Uh, so we're going to have to be on point with our scheme and what we're trying to do. I want to make sure we kind of missed it in the highlights earlier. Shout out. I think Key Wetzel led the team in mm. tackles. Shannon Showers with a great interception oh my gosh. Uh, from his safety position. So you guys were getting some turnovers and really yeah. playing well. No, Shannon's, Shannon's was, I mean, just on the money because Show had just fumbled. Uh, and we gave them yeah. the ball, and then four plays later, uh, we come up with that interception. I mean, couldn't have, I mean, couldn't have neutralized uh, the offense's turnover any quicker. That was fantastic. Defense picking up the offense, which is always <laughs> a beautiful thing. It's going to be a 6 o'clock start up in Valdosta, Pensacola time, 7 o'clock up in Eastern time. We'll be on the radio with you at... 5.30 local time with the pregame show. You'll hear Coach uh, kind of break that game down again there. And then you can follow it, of course, through Flow Sports, our broadcast uh, streaming partners in the GSC. It'll be the Valdosta broadcast. So I recommend watch that, turn the sound down, and yeah, put the gotta radio listen, on. Just, gotta just listen to balance it out. We'll make it that. work. Coach, two more games to go. I know the regional rankings will come out for the first time this week with ranked order rather than mm -hmm. alphabetical. People panicked sure. last week. Oh, oh yeah. Wait, wait, Thought we were 10. Yeah. Um, it, it should be interesting to see because it was a crazy week in D2 and even in the region with some losses. Yeah. Uh, really, uh, I think though, if, if we would have ranked them, there would have been a, a big shakeup because an undefeated loss, the one-loss team loss. You know, so there, were, there was a handful of movement that will take place. 
you know, all that stuff's great, but we still got two games left, and we got a big one this week to end, you know, our conference play. So uh, all that's nice, but, you know, it doesn't get us anything. So we, we, we got to take care of business this week. As they say, we can only play them one at a time. <laughs> Can't play three or four in a bunch. So, Coach, appreciate your time. As always, we thank you for watching. GoArgos.com is the place to check out all the great stuff going on. Again, soccer's in the GSC tournament mm -hmm. up in Huntsville yeah. this weekend. Volleyball is going to host the GSC tournament here coming up two weekends away. So lots of great stuff is happening in Argo Nation, and the Argo Armada app will keep you connected to that as well. We'll see you next time on The Coach Shinnick Show.